Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and there is a game engine out there that I will call, oh, what is it? Is it my nemesis? Not sure, that's probably too hard of a word, but uh, it's a frustrating experience, and that engine is called O3DE. Now, O3DE started life as CryEngine from Crytek. Crytek ran into some financial difficulties, and they basically sold a fork of CryEngine, CryEngine 3.2, 3.3, somewhere in that neighborhood, over to a company you may have heard of by the name of Amazon. Now, Amazon turned it into a game engine called Lumberyard. They used it internally. Uh, most successful project was definitely New Worlds. The whole Amazon Game Studio thing was a bit of a fail for sure. And as you can see, in July 2021, they announced the formation of the O3D Open 3D Foundation for the Open 3D Engine, or O3DE, which leads us to O3DE. Now, the last time I talked about O3DE was back in October for the previous release, and, uh, well, actually, it was weird. It is good now. And uh, I had a lot of uh, painful experiences with O3DE. The onboarding experience has been frustrating, and they've been basically completely rewriting Lumberyard, which was a rewrite of CryEngine. So it felt like this perpetual rewrite. But we're finally getting to the point where, honestly, O3DE is starting to feel rock solid and ready for use. A lot of the jank is gone. A lot of the uh, little annoyances are gone. And the performance is just getting better and better and better. So that's what we're looking at today. O3DE 25.05 is here. So it has been released, released a couple of days back. It's available at O3DE.org. And I'm going to show you it hands on. Now, the first impressive part was the install. I used the offline installer. It was about a three gig download. Uh, it took about 15 minutes to complete. No drama at all. Just make sure you have the right configurations of um, Visual Studio installed with the right workflows, and you should be good to go. I even added some gems to it, which is their extension system available over here. I added the sponsor level, which I'll show you in action, uh, white boxing, I think, a couple other things, and it just worked. Now, that was a point of pain in the past with these gem systems. So getting your project up and running so much smoother than it used to be in the past, which is a big part of why I found working with Lumberyard slash O3DE so frustrating early on. By the way, O3DE is run by the Linux foundation, which also means that you have both Windows and Linux versions, which is pretty cool. So here we are inside of O3DE 2505. Uh, this is the editing environment. What I have found in general, it is so much smoother than it it was before. Uh, one of the big things about this particular update, there's not a lot of new shiny features here, but there are things like 40% improvement to render speed. That's a pretty big deal. So I just found that the usability, the general just likability of the engine has gone way up. You know, one thing I found a little bit of jank is I found that things get deselected and reselected over here sometimes. So you got to kind of click over to get it reselected. I don't know the conditions that cause it to do that. Uh, but otherwise, it's a very smooth experience. It's probably like on par with Unity, Unreal, and Godot in terms of the editor now, uh, which I wouldn't have ever said in the past. So again, an idea of how O3D actually works. Uh, your world is built up of entities. Entities have components. For example, this shader ball, I have applied a mini audio playback component, which I'm actually having trouble with. But this is nice to see because previously you could only use W Weiss for their audio, which made it like a huge setup pain in the butt. Now there is a simpler system, uh, which, oh, there we go. Now it's working for me. Uh, I had to do a reload, I guess. I don't know why. Uh, again, some small aspects of jank, but having simple to use audio available here without having to go through the whole WY setup is wonderful. I'm love, happy to see that. But what you see here is I've actually set up an input map on this one. An input map is just an asset, so you can see the details of it right here. So I created an input called space, uh, which uses input generator of keyboard of type space. Pretty straightforward. And I'm going to show you how uh, things actually work. So these things are actually just applied to it. So components are added this way. Uh, so I added that as a script canvas component and an input component. So input is available under gameplay. Uh, like so, gameplay input. So I wired it in there. But you can add in these various different components. By the way, you can use uh, C++ and Lua for your game logic in addition to the script canvas we're going to show today. But you got to see special effects, physics here, physics fully integration, uh, shapes, and so on. So all kinds of components are available. So you got an entity, you add shapes to it. Uh, let me go back and reselect my guy. Uh, so what I've then done is set up a script canvas. This is their visual scripting system. Uh, probably the easiest way to work with things. But again, you can use C++ and they have this bus system to communicate between the various different components. Here you can see a very simple script canvas. So what I've done 
This is my game entity. Uh, so I've attached it. So it's self, it's self-referential. This will fire off, or this is my entry point for my script canvas. I've set up a simple on when this entity is activated. We set up an input handler and we handle the type of input of space like so, which would defined earlier on. And then when we hit the space key over here, we move our entity. That's pretty straightforward, right? So go here. Uh, I don't think I changed anything, so we won't bother saving that. And let's go run it. And here you see, here's our level. And then space, we jump by one each time I press the space bar. So that is the basics of how you code inside of O3DE. At least that's one of the options. Of course, you can write your own C++ classes. You can do your game entirely in C++ if you wish as well. Plus, you can also use Lua in there. But I don't know how much Lua is being promoted these days. Uh, kind of gives you a bit of an idea. Now, another area where that I found it nice is, again, uh, I'm finding the performance is much better. Let's get a little bit more complicated scene going on here. So I added in this, I added a gem. So Adam content, Sponza. So this actually works. The gem system, it's their extensibility system. It actually worked in this case, which was very nice. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a Sponza and we'll drop it right there. So here you can see a bit more of an idea of what the performance is like. Rendering performance has changed. Uh, I think it's rock solid. Again, you wanna create an entity in the world. Just basically come on up here in your level, create an entity like so. And then we'll call the, so double clicked on it. There, we focused it. Oops, entity run here. I can rename it to my light. Guess what I'm gonna add to it. So come up here, add, and then you can actually search, filter down right here, lighting. Just add a, a regular light like so. Um, light type over here it is, um, we'll do a spherical point light. And there you can see lighting in the world. And go ahead and, and change the intensity of our light, the effects right there. Turn shadowing on and off for our light. You get an idea again of what the performance and editing experience is like, and it's it's so much beyond what it used to be. It's like again, it's just lost its jank, and now we're dealing with an engine that has uh, a lot of like the the little things that would keep me from recommending this to an indie, like the lack of audio. Now we have Minio audio integrated in there, which is again you can use WICE on the back end for a more complex scenario if you need audio occlusion, etc. But having that more accessible turnkey approach, it's there now. The tooling it makes more sense. The uh, processes are definitely less jank than they used to be. So quite a nice improvement across the board. Now this particular release itself, the 25.05, um, there's not a ton here in terms of, again, sexy new features, but it's stuff that made it work better. So we got like just the highlight TLDR version here, improved rendering performance up to 40%. That is pretty solid. So thanks to subpass rendering support and new shader uh, constants feature. Uh, mature multi-GPU rendering support, uh, vertex color support, uh, improvements to their track view, which is like their cinematics um, kind of site, uh, our animation setup tool, um, stability and ease of use improvements, improvements to XR installation process, improved the Android build process. And then we got a bunch of stuff on the simulation side of things. The asset processor dependability improved. Asset processor used to break all the time. Again, it's one of those little areas where just less jank. And then reduced memory usage in the editor and the runtime environment. So this whole thing, the, the engine itself, it's just better to work with. I found it, um, again, a, a much nicer experience that I did in the past. And I do wonder how I can make those shadows a little less jaggy. I'm sure there's a way. I haven't really looked into it. Let's actually see. No, not bias. Uh, shot. Ah, there we go. So there's all kinds of tools and options available. Sorry, I went on a little tangent there. Uh, but just general improvements across the board, plus uh, multiplayer bug fixes and improvements. You can get into the full release notes, and then you're just going to see it's it's a lot of you know uh, smaller, minor details. But again, across the board, you're going to see the word fixed, 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 fixed. And I feel it. I feel those fixes now. This is an engine that is... It's much more viable than it was in the past. It's to the point where uh, if you wanted to start making your game with it, it's not such a terrible idea. So have you checked out O3D? Again, when I started with this engine in the past, the installation process, dealing with this, getting my builds to work, getting the engine to set up in the first place, getting that first successful build, this used to take like hours and hours and hours 
hours if I actually succeeded at all. That's why I called it my nemesis. But there was something exciting about it. The whole concept of an open source AAA engine with huge backers behind it, that's pretty appealing actually. And what we are seeing here is they seem to be finally getting there after all of these rewrites, after the new rendering system, after cleaning up the editor and optimizing the performance, it's just nicer to use. So if you checked out O3D in the past and like me, you are just wanting to smash your head through a bloody wall, well, check it out again because it has improved a lot. The way they do things is a little bit different than you've seen with a lot of other engines, but uh, some of the, the weirder ways have been kind of ironed out. And once you get used to the, the bus approach and the script canvas and all that, it's not such a bad way to work. So I'm curious, what do you think of O3DE? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.